That's the mystery of sex. It's never two. I like this new wave of feminine crime fiction writers who are feminist, but not in this stupid, politically correct way. Their feminism is an authentic feminism, you know. They don't have this patronizing attitude like, you know, women, women should always be passive victims and so on and so on. But even maybe, now I'll say something for which maybe I will not be popular here, even better than how she called Gillian Flynn or what, is an Irish girl uh, called Tana French. A series of crime fiction taking place in Dublin with more or less the same spirit, the same attitude. A kind of a, if I have to invent some stupid title, a kind of a dark neo-feminist uh, 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 crime thrillers. But no, of the of the movie that I uh, recently saw, there is a problem. Often a movie attracts me, not attracts me, but gives me to think intellectually, but I don't really like it uh, as a movie. For example, uh, the one, uh, her, with Joachim Venn, you know? Uh, in the film, at the end, he is the hero together with a girl. I think she's called Amy but they are both abandoned by their machines. The big enigma here is, and this is what always attracted me, and this is, I think, what my mentor, in theory, French psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan, insisted in his crazy thesis, there is no sexual relationship, which means we are never alone, me and my partner. There has to be a third element a fantasy scene, an intruder. It's only through that mediation of a third element here in her, there are operating systems that sex functions. And then I started to think about other variations of this. Like, for example, a perfect, uh, very intelligently made, 20 years old British publicity for beer which is a wonderful, ironic repetition of an old fairy tale motive, you know. A young girl walks by a stream, sees a frog, and of course, that's what you do in fairy tales. She picks up and kisses the frog, and the frog turns into a prince, charming young man. But then the publicity goes on. The charming young man looks at her, kisses her, and she turns into a can of beer, you know, like that's what he really wanted, you know. And then I found here in the States a similar but inverted version, some pretty disgusting incidentally, publicity for Taco Bell, publicity for something called Quesadito, which is quesadilla and burrito, combination of the two. And it's presented in such an obscene way that if you combine the two, it's really like a penis enwrapped by a vagina. But how is the publicity spot done here? Uh, a young guy and a girl sit during lunch break at a table. One has <laughs> quesadilla, the other burrito, and they look at each other, and then you see each person's dream. Boy looks at her and imagines the future. They start to talk, they get married, have children. Then she looks at him, approaches him in her dream and uh, takes his piece of burrito or whatever, uh, wraps him up so that she gets a kind of a bisexual completing and just makes a sign and he disappears, you know. It's similar to that one beer, but what I think is that the enigma behind all this is, why do we never get just a couple? Why it always have to be some intruder? And the best Hollywood version of this, I ask all the viewers who are watching us now to, to download. You can download it for free. It's an American classic movie. Preston Sturge's Lady Eve, where you have the ultimate marriage proposal scene. You have uh, Henry Fonda and Barbara Stanwyck and a horse standing behind 
them and the horse's head is always intruding and so on and so on. That's the mystery of sex. It's never two. You always need something, an imagined gaze, an element intruding and so on and so on.